Good morning, everyone. This is Dennis Hammond. I'm an IPC juror, and we're here today to look at the Sunset Imaging Awards for 2021. And our judges today are, and introduce yourselves, please. Sherry Hammond in Idaho Falls. Pete Wright, Brenton, Florida. And Dennis Hammond, Idaho Falls, Idaho, uh, working here to help you out and view these images. So uh, let's get started. Butterfly Blot Blooms. Butterfly Blooms is the title for this. What's the category for this one? Oh, I'm sorry. We are starting with fine art and composites. Okay. Score is 81. Next image. Detail of a red train car. Score is 77. Fillmore sign times three. Seventy five. Follow the leader. Seventy six. Hope. Eighty four. Everybody happy with that? Okay, we can go on this one. Um, making a mark. Seventy six. Northern Harrier flight. Can I challenge the Hope one? You can. Let's finish this and we'll come back to Hope. Maggie, did you get that? Or Adna? So please score Northern Harrier flight. Northern Harrier, oh, um, well, there we go. Northern Harrier flight 80. I'm going to challenge this and real fast because I had an 86. I had a whole next category and maybe I'm the one pushing it up to the higher score. I thought this definitely had the impact in it. I really liked the presentation, how I brought it into it. And I had to you know, remember that this was in the fine art and composite page. And so it wasn't necessarily in a landscape or the animal thing. So I liked how they got the mirrored bird kind of feeling in the bottom, the texture, the how they've used the smoke on the one side type of the effect and the, the reeds on the right hand side to kind of keep you eye the vision and looking down so that's why i landed on an 86 for me uh what order do you want us to go in? uh okay i'll just call uh share you be next um i scored this a 77 and um while i love the subject matter and uh, the concept um looking at um the bird the wings are uh, the furthest from camera are are tack sharp, but the wings that are closest to us are uh, are pretty out of focus, as is the middle of the bird and um, part of the tail. And then also the feet are tack sharp and the beak is tack sharp. So the the sharpness issue just wasn't quite um, making sense to me. Okay, Pete. Um, yeah, so I was at a seventy-eight, uh, and. I, I didn't mind so much the sharpness because I can kind of lean lend that to depth of field, but I, you know, to me the bird is kind of the best part of the image. However, when I get into the bird, when I look at the fringe part of its tail and the fringe part of its closest wing, I see this white clipping that was not handled well, and that white clipping just jumps out on the darker background. Uh, so it just feels like the clipping wasn't done really well there. And then there's just this, this random splotches of an over overlay that, I, you know, I, I just kind of feel like the grunge and overlay thing, it, it has to make sense for this, for an image. And for this one, it just doesn't make sense. I, unless it's supposed to be a post-apocalyptic image of a bird flying through, you know, a nuclear death scene or something it just doesn't make sense for the image uh so i just 
I think they took a, a pleasant image of this this beautiful bird and, and put it into something that I have a hard time just wrapping my mind around. Well, I appreciate our responses. You know, I saw some of those things there, but you know, I kind of treated the out of focus for the made the end of the flight, uh, and I, I treated the whiteness they call them clipping. I thought maybe okay, that made some of the light because that's the direction of the light because the back end's lit more. Um, but to do with my. Um, I'm going to kind of succeed to my jurors and I'm going to go to an 80 on my score. And so I'm afraid we'll just rescore your image and put in a new score and what you think should be. So. Okay. Score come to 78. We also had a challenge on hope from Sherry. So could we bring that one back, please? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I scored this a. Uh, um, 88 um, in the excellent category. Um, beautiful storytelling um, with the dead trees and with the, the hope of this, this middle tree um, and some religious significance and the, the deeper roots for, for the white tree. Um, just beautiful, emotional, um, lovely uh, background with the, the modeled pastels and just want to talk about it. Hey, Pete. I was an 81 on this. Um, I mean, I, I get the message. It's pretty blatant. It's in your face uh, in terms of what the message is. Uh, but when I get into the image, there's parts of the image that I feel like are well executed. The tree on the left, I think they did a great job on the tree on the left because you see the shadow and the light direction coming from the left. Um, the one in the middle, I, I, I have... I like the bulk of the tree, but when you get up into the cross where they made the cross with the branches, it just feels messy. And those branches, they don't feel natural. The twists and the turns, especially on the, the uh, lateral part or the horizontal part of the cross itself, just feels like wire versus branches. Uh, I mean, there's so much detail given in the branches below and then they get up to that area and it just feels like it's almost I don't know, thrown together. It just, it doesn't feel as fluid in that area. And then the lights just feel a little too artificial to me. Uh, it feels like they just took the shape of a light and put uh, a, uh, a little white blob in the middle of it to make it seem like it's glowing. Uh, but there's a glow from the entire tree, not those lights per se. So just a couple of areas where I felt like there could have been improvement that would have taken the score up for me. Well, um, I scored an 85 on this, and I uh, name of the impact on it, and I took into account actually some of the things that Pete addressed, the the light around the globes and the uh, going around the top. It looked almost like a Christmas tree when you see the light, the the form, the shape of the light going to the top. So, but what got me was the impact and the storytelling. It's what really kind of carried me through, and the the roots coming down. And Sherry's already addressed all that. So, Sherry, do you want to give us a rebuttal, please? Well, um, thank you. Um, in rebuttal, um, thank you everybody for your comments. Um, I think the the biggest concern was uh, the cross at the top. Uh, if we left it like a normal tree branch, like uh, the rest of them that we have here. I don't think we could really make out a cross. Um, I, I think they they took that in mind so that we would be able to know that it's a cross. Um, and so that really helps with the story for me. And in the lanterns, um, it's the light for me, it looks like sunrise, the light's coming up, the, the hope is is happening. Um, so the lanterns are, are, are turned down a little bit so that we're not needing them that much. So that's, that's what I took away from this. Um, but I will stay at 88. Awesome. Everybody rescore, please. Okay, score is 85. Next image, please. Title is Old Truck in Kansas. Score is 81. Title is Together. Score is 79. Title is Tricolor Hibiscus. Score is 
score is 83. Okay, this completes the category fine art and composites. Is there anything anybody wants to bring back or readjust? Okay, let's move on to our next category, which will be portrait. The title of this is called Anticipation. Score is 78. Title is Let Me Dream. Score is 82. Title is Looking to be loved. Score is 82. I hope I don't massacre this. Manog. Title is Manog. What's this category again? Just to be sure. This is portrait. Just want to make sure that we judge it. I appreciate that. Score is 81. Challenge. Okay, Sherry, challenge. <clears throat> I scored this a 79, and I love the subject matter. Um, I love um, the, the feel of this, this gentleman. Um, just kind of a, a slice of, of life watching him there. Um, a few things that held me back um, from uh, merit category. His hat is disappearing um, into the wall. Um, and then if you look at his hand that is up to his face with the cigarette, the left camera left side of the hand down the arm has a super sharp uh, white halo around it. And so does the other the outside of the hand. And if you follow that down um, his chest uh, down to the very bottom, it's a super sharp line with a white halo around that as well. Um, for me to go to the merit category, um, those uh, uh, processing issues would have to be addressed. Pete? Yeah, I, I struggled with this one because I like the guy. I was at an 83 and I really like the guy. And there were color issues in this that really pushed, pushed me down from going higher. If this had been a black and white, I would have been much, much higher. Uh, and I really struggled with the top of his hat. Again, it's another one of these texture issues where a texture or an overlay was used that hurt the image instead of helping it, instead of giving it the, the dimension that it has, it flattened it out. So you get this super sharp image of this guy and then the hat that he's wearing that's part of the story um that's part of who he is and part of the story is almost on a different plane so it's almost unexplainable how that could possibly happen in the real world i didn't even really see the white lines on him maybe he's just walking around with a chalk line drawn around his body permanently i don't know <laughs> but yeah seeing seeing that and seeing those elements you know i really wanted to be for the image but honestly it's uh, I'm struggling to keep it where it is. Well, I appreciate it. You know, I was an 82 and I too was taken by this portrait. And, um, you know, I agree with Pete and me, a different presentation looked on this. And I'm thinking maybe, you know, the title was a little tough because I didn't understand what the title meant. Maybe that's the guy's name. And as competitors, do we need to make sure that the judges understand what the title means and what it going from there? So is it your way of talking audibly uh, to the judges what you wanted to say? But one of the uh, things I'm thinking this was, besides maybe being black, white, this would maybe be better uh, in reportage if it was something like that. But uh, the, the Sherry brought up some points there that um, I kind of just kind of slid in the back corner and they're now they're becoming too obvious as we sit here and look at it. So um, I'm going to listen to Sherry's rebuttal here. Thank you everyone for your comments. Um, I, I think the maker has a lot of good information um, to, to maybe rework this image and uh, make something special. Um, just be careful with uh, processing and over-processing and, and just going a little bit too far in, in some of the, the actions and 
um, different things that, that we have available to us. Um, but I will stay at uh, 79. Okay, judges, would you please type in a rescore, please? Score is 79. Okay, next image, please. Title is Mast. Score is 76. Title is My Son. Score is 74. Title is Night Dreamer. Score is 78. The title is The Royal Paw Trait. The Royal Paw Trait. And we are still in the portrait class. Score is 80. The title is The Weight of My Old Uniform. Title, a score is 77. The title is Waking Dream. The score, oh, got to finish up here, sorry. Score is 76. Okay, this concludes the portrait class. Is there anything anybody wants to bring back and talk about? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind looking at the black and white of uh, the young lady again. Night, Night Dreamer, the one. Um, yeah. Night Dreamer. Okay. Yeah. Maggie or Adna, can we bring that one back, please? Okay, this is a challenge by Pete on Night Dreamer. Is this the right one, Pete? That's the one. Okay. So I was an eighty-one on this one, and you know, there's definitely a few things that could have been done better, but for the most part, I think that they handled their exposure really well. Um, just on the edge of nice Rembrandt lighting there. She's, she's short lit. So they handled that well. Her pose is nice and seductive. Everything's covered just the way you would want it covered to, you know, not become obscene, but still be kind of a little bit of a tease. Uh, her expression is that seductive, nice little look. Uh, I like the framing, the tonality of it. There's detail in all the areas that I want to see you know there's nothing blown out and there's nothing blocked up uh, that I can see I've got detail everywhere on my monitor anyway so um, you know it's not one of those images that I want to push into the you know upper 80s but I feel like it's you know right there 80 81 I think it's deserving well I appreciate it. no I was a 78 on this and I too like this uh, as well to a point, but then there's a couple of issues that held me back. And, you know, I agree with the lighting was nice, but then we have little things like the knuckles face right to hand. I thought that the hand placement could have been done a little better. It was a little awkward for me. And then that light coming from the short lighting side, you know, that whole side was uh, so much lighter there, but then that little snip of that leg that was so much brighter than a lot of other places that could, uh, the cropping could have been rechanged or toned that down. And then right underneath her uh, left hand, right there at the elbow, that bright spot there, there, there's some little issues there. So yeah, there's some things that are really going for the image and then there's some that are just holding me back. Sherry? Um, I don't remember exactly, but it was mid to upper 70s um, that I scored this. You was a 76, Sherry. Okay, thank you. Um, and while I do um, think this is a, a, a lovely woman, um, I just think it missed um, merit. I am seeing blocked up shadows, especially on the shadow side of her face and, and around that, that hand that's extended um, up to the neck and that bright, bright um, um, edge of the hand. I, I just am drawn to that hand away from the face. And then that bright spot um, that's um, kind of in the crook of her elbow right there. And then as mentioned that um, the hand, the way that it's posed, we're seeing the back of the hand and, and the knuckles it just makes it look big and not very feminine at all. And then with the fingers um, folded back, it's just a dark mass. 
So that area is a very high contrast point um, along with the bright hand in, in the dark shadow of the hair. Um, just think it missed um, merit. Um, so that's where I'm at. Okay. With all those taken into account, let's rescore, please, if you would. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Pete, Pete I, I jumped again. Sorry, Pete, you get a rebuttal. Uh, yeah, I appreciate everything that you guys said. Um, you know, when I when I look at her right hand, camera left, I, look, I mean, obviously it's not ideal. We don't want to see the back of hands, but I don't know how else you could have easily posed that, maybe a little bit more elegantly, but I think no matter how you pose it, if she's going to cover herself in the way that she's covering to make sure that she's not exposed, her hand's got to be there somehow. Um, so, I mean, it's not driving me crazy that you know it's, it's one of those that's not where my eye is supposed to go anyway so I'm not landing there uh the little peak of her leg on the bottom I think that's kind of part of the tease of oh there's a little something there and it brings you down and makes you explore that part of the image but it's not heavy enough that it keeps you there uh and then you've got the two brightest parts of the image are her hand which helps you flow back up to her face which is where I want to land. So, you know, the image does a job of making me flow around the whole image and uh, enjoy the whole thing, but ultimately land back where I want. I, on my monitor, I'm, I'm seeing detail in those areas that I could see them blocking up, uh, but I, I've got detail in those areas, yet I've got detail everywhere. So I, I, what I'm looking at looks good, but I totally understand. Um, I'm going to stay with my 81, but I don't fault you guys if you don't change. So. Okay, everybody rescore, please. Okay, I get back. Okay, score is 78. Oh, I'm sorry, 79. Apologize. 79 is the score for this image. Okay, so now we're concluding the portrait class. Again, is there anything anybody wants to bring back or chat about? Okay, we're moving on to the next category, which is wedding. And the title of this is Dancing the Night Away. Score is 75. New Zealand Bride and Groom in Snow. Score is 74. The title is Owner, O-W-N-E-R, Owner. Seventy-two. Title is Photographer. Seventy five Sunset Love Seventy five Title is Wish Score is seventy six Okay, this concludes the wedding category. Does anyone have anything they want to talk about or bring back? Okay, is everybody okay? You want us to discuss areas where we felt like images really fell flat just to have some discussion or no? Let's save that for the chat later, Pete, okay. so we can keep the momentum and the mojo going here. Is that okay? 100%. Okay, the next case, okay, so we're moving on. The next category is probably one of the biggest categories we got to look at here, and uh, it's wildlife and landscape. So Ooh. we're going to, is everybody okay? Keep yeah, cruising. Yeah. Okay. I uh, hope I'm saying this right. Cruton Gorge. Croton, Cruton, C R O T O N. Score is 77. 
Dodging raindrops in Yosemite. Seventy six. Down the hatch. Eighty. El Matador Beach Cove Sunset. Eighty two. Fall trees in Wisconsin. Seventy nine. Golden Hour Owl. Eighty two. Great Blue Heron in the Mist. Eighty two. If looks could kill. Seventy eight. Leopard family. Seventy nine. Lightning sunset. Eighty one. Moon rising. Seventy five. New angle. Seventy eight. Orange sunflower. Seventy nine. Purple Finch, seventy seven Rainbow Sunset, okay, is this the right image here? I mean, um, just questions. We have another image uh, underneath it that looks like something similar. Is this the right image for the title? Okay. Uh, okay. Score it, please. I just want to make sure. Thank you. 77. Red Mountain Summer. 76. Rural Serenity. 75. Seed for two. 76. Uh, Storm clouds over Watson Lake. 78. The splendor of fall. 77. Tiny bubbles. Seventy seven. All right, I'll challenge that one. Okay, Mr. Pete, take it. I'm an eighty two on this one. Um 
just it's such a cute image. I mean, it, it's not an easy subject to photograph. Uh, so that they were in the water with this. I mean, this is, it looks like it's probably off the coast of Florida somewhere right after the, the, the turtles are going out. You can tell it's in the actual Gulf or the ocean because you can see the ripples of the sand underneath. So for them to get that kind of clarity in actual water without, you know, a lot of sand moving around, to get that little bit of reflection of the baby turtle up top uh, and it's leaving its nest. It's just burrowed out of its egg and its nest and going out for water and blowing out bubbles. I mean, it's just such a neat little story behind this image. Um, I, I just think it's definitely in that 80 plus area. Well, thank you for enlightening us with the story, Noam, because I was at a 75, and some of the things that you're enamored with is some of the things that kept me back, you know, the the rip, the white ripple come across the top and the reflection was kind of bothering me, but now you explained some of it there. I just felt like maybe it wasn't as crisp, as sharp as I would like to see it, but, uh, and that's why I landed in the 75, but I'm certainly going to listen. Sherry? I scored this as 76, and while I agree, it is uh, super cute. Um, there's just a lot that was holding me back. Uh, the only thing sharp on the, the turtle is the tip of the head, the bubbles, and the very tip of the little fin um, on camera right. And then also, um, I've got banding through the gradation um, in the blues in the middle. So it was uh, technical issues that um, held me out of merit. Pete, rebuttal, please. Yeah, I mean, I've looked, the area of sharpness is, if you're going to have one spot that's in focus, that's the spot you want to focus. Uh, I'm going to assume they were probably using a little bit more of a shallow depth of field because they're underwater. So they're having to shoot through some density that is going to cause them an inability to get the depth that they may want. Um, I've seen gradation in a lot of images today, so I don't know if it's just the way we're processing digitals to watch or not, or maybe how the images are submitted. I don't know, uh, but I just see good color tonality. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like the parts that I'm supposed to look at are are well done, and I think it, there's a neat story here. So, okay, so you're gonna stay at your 82? Yeah, I'm gonna stay at my 82. Okay, everybody, please rescore, please. Okay, score is 79. Next image, please. Wisconsin Sunset. Score is 70, 78. Okay, this concludes the landscape and uh, um, wildlife. Is there anything anybody wants to bring back or review? I just like the little turtle. <laughs> you, you like my little tiny bubbles mm -hmm. there? All right, well, this concludes the judging for the Sunset Image Awards for 2021. Uh, we personally want to thank Sherry Hammond, Pete Wright, and myself, Dennis Hammond, for critiquing the green images. We had some awesome images to look at. It's pretty tough. Now, we were using the PPA judging uh, system with the 12 elements as we looked at the image. And then we used the imaging scoring system with excellent, superior, excellent, uh, deserving of merit, and above average scoring. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, congratulations on your scores, and thank you for entering.
Are you, you're seeing the wrong screen. Is Jason on to go. record? Yep, he's already recording, it looks like. Oh, I'll shut up then. Jason, is that good? Can't see if he's here. But it's recording though, so I'm hoping it is. Uh, Dennis, whenever you're ready, take it away. Well, welcome back to the Sunset Imaging Awards. And we're so happy and excited to announce the winners of this year's image competition with this. And once again, we had Pete Wright and Sherry Hammond and myself, Dennis Hammond, uh, judging this. And so let's get going here. In the fine art category, uh, winning the first place in the fine art category is by Tony Harriman, Hope. And she gets a $300 cash award. And the portrait classification for $300 first place is Let Me Dream by Mari Latos. The wedding category coming with $300 winner for this category is by Ricky Pan. And in the wildlife and landscape category, the first place category award and $300 goes to Great Blue Heron in the Mist by Becky Kemp. Congratulations, everybody. These were some awesome images. It was a tough decision by the judges and we were so we are so pleased and excited to be able to recognize these. So thank you for letting us take a look and congratulations to the winners.